Good morning, St. Michael's, and, and welcome. Especially welcome, join me in welcoming Luke Dellison, who is our guest worship leader today. Uh, Luke is in his senior year at uh, the Lutheran Seminary, and you can read a little bit more about him in the bulletin, but we all look forward to saying hello to him after services today. Thank you so much, Luke, for, for being with us this morning. Also, a big thank you goes to Malachi for the wonderful piano concert this past Wednesday. If you missed it or want to watch it again, the video is available on our Facebook page. I also encourage everyone to watch it, whether you attended or whether you hadn't seen it at all. It's well worth your time. We are blessed to have Malachi at St. Michael's. And thank you again for a very special night, Malachi. Let me mention that next Sunday, a very important Sunday, we'll have the annual congregational meeting where we will vote for three members of the Congregational Council and approve the proposed 2021 budget. If there's anyone who needs to see a copy of the 2021 budget before you vote on it next Sunday, there are still copies out in the narthex to look at. If um, any member who wants to pre-vote their ballot, which means um, don't feel comfortable with coming to church um, for attendance, you can um, come by the office starting tomorrow, Monday, anytime from 10 to 3 o'clock in the day through Thursday. Thursday will be your last chance at 3 o'clock starting tomorrow morning, Monday at 10 a.m. to Thursday at 3 a.m. And you can um, come by the church office you'll be asked to sign a log because our bylaws say that we have to have a record of who voted, even though the vote is itself secret. So you'll just be able, to, you'll just be asked to sign a log in and uh, mark your, your ballot privately, fold it and place it in the ballot box. All early ballots will be included with those that are cast live next Sunday, November 22nd. If you need curbside assistance, um, handle at your car, please call the office before you arrive and they'll meet you outside and, and be able to execute that. Also, next Sunday is the last day for the sister care donations. And Rita, you have a few words to share with us about that? Thank you, Rita. And finally, I'd like to express or the congregation express congratulations to Colleen Anderson, who was married this weekend. Pastor Frank and Pastor Mary are still celebrating with their family in North Carolina. That wedding. Um, are there any other announcements from anyone? Malachi, would you begin our service with a prelude? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Please stand. O oh Lord, open my lips. Glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly, like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The first reading is from the first chapter of Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guest. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, those who say in their hearts, The Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth will be plundered and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind. Because they have sinned against the Lord, their blood shall be poured out like dust, 
and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full, a terrible end, he will make of all the inhabitants of earth. The word of the Lord. Second reading is from the fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, the sudden destruction will come upon them. As labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then, let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. For those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, for it, is, for it is as if a man going on a journey summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had, but the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. 
then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own within, with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Every summer, all the way through college, I, like so many others, worked at a summer camp. I worked at Luther Springs in Florida. This was a Lutheran summer camp that was located just outside of Gainesville. And it is one of the sister camps to Luther Ridge and Luther Rock in North Carolina. And while I worked at camp, one of my favorite things that we did was perform skits for the campers. This week, as I looked at our gospel for today, I was reminded of one of my favorite skits that we used to do. It was called the Woo Wee skit. Now, the premise of this skit is pretty simple. It starts with one of the counselors standing in front of everyone, and they would cup their hands in front of their mouth, just like this, and then they would yell, Woo Wee. So it kind of goes like this. They would do this a couple of times, and then another one of the counselors would come up and ask them what they were doing. They asked what that was that they were hearing. Now the first counselor, the original one that was up there, they would explain the woo-wee, and then offer to share it with the one that just came up. Now after sharing the woo-wee, the original counselor would explain that they, that they need to make sure to continue to share the woo-wee to the person they just gave it to. And then after explaining this, that person would leave, leaving the one who just received it to try it out. That person would then stay up there and give their best woo-wees a couple of times. And then one by one, other counselors would come up asking what they were doing. However, unlike the first counselor, this person would not end up sharing their woo-wee. They would go out of their way to keep it a secret, doing things such as running away, hiding on the ground, hiding behind chairs. This would go on for a couple of times, and each time a person came up and the woo their woo-wee was not shared, the woo-wee grew quieter and quieter until it could not be heard anymore. Finally, the first person returns and asks the other how their woo-wee is doing. And after a while, it comes out that their woo-wee is not working. It is then explained to that person that that is because they did not share it. Finally, understanding, they call back all those that came through and they end up sharing the woo-wee with everyone. A similar story we hear in the gospel today. In our gospel today, we hear the parable of the talents. We hear the story of a master leaving their property or talents to three servants. A talent can be best understood as simply a lot of money. The master leaves these talents with three servants. Two of them take them and go out and share it, and the talents grow and multiply. The third one, on the other hand, fearfully hides the talents they receive, and they do not share it. They keep it to themselves out of the fear of losing it. And as the parable continues, we hear the master upset about this, since the talents were not something that were supposed to be hidden, but shared. Just as in the skit, the wooey was something that was supposed to be shared. So were the talents that the servants received in the parable. Now looking at this parable, it really never says why the servants received this gift. All it says was out of their abundance, the master gave these talents to them. It does not say that the servants did anything or deserved them for any 
reason. But they were given them anyway. It also really never says that there was a possibility of losing them. The one thing that we can see and hear is that it was something that was supposed to be shared. Dirk Lang, the Assistant General Secretary for Ecumenical Relations at the Lutheran World Federation, wrote about this parable saying, we are forced to think of the master as inviting his servants into a fullness, a superabundance of grace that is continually offered. The master already possessing the gift of the talents is inviting his servants to share in his joy. When the first two are finally invited to enter the joy of their master, they are perhaps not entering a greater fullness than before, but rather now are able to recognize the dynamics of joy that undergird the gift of faith. The joy of the master is the joy of the feast that is self-giving, sharing, and being distributed into the world. Through the life and death of Christ, we receive the abundant gift that is God's love and grace. We receive this gift out of nothing of our own doing, but because of God's love for each and every one of us. We receive this gift out of the overflowing and never-ending abundance that is God's love and grace. And as we hear in the gospel today, as we hear in the woo we skit, we are now called to go out and share that gift. To go out and share the gift that is God's love and grace with all that we meet. To not hide it from others or dig a hole and place it in. But to go out and share that love and grace. Today it does seem especially easy to be like the third servant. To be like the counselor from the skit that does not want to share their woo-wee with anyone. We turn on the news and see headlines of political division, virus cases surging, hate getting met with hate. We see all these things and it's easy to get stuck where we are, to get stuck in fear, to get stuck in hate and want to remove ourselves. To take this gift that God has given us and want to take it and hide. But that is not what we are called to do. The good news that we hear today is that God uses us to share God's love and grace, and we encounter God at work in the world through these moments. We receive this gift of love and grace, then we go out and share that gift. God is at work and present in the world, and God uses us to spread this gift. Today, this may not take the form that we think of or are accustomed to. Going out and sharing God's love and grace can look like many different things. Today it can be something as a phone call to check in on somebody or writing a letter to see how they are doing. It looks like taking the steps to make sure that everyone is safe and, health, safe and healthy, especially in this time of uncertainty. It looks like reaching out and caring for someone, even if you do not agree with them. There are many ways that we can go out and share this gift of God's love and grace that we have received. To share our woo-wee with all that we meet. Now as we begin to wrap up my sermon today, I would like to read a poem from Rami Shapiro. Rami Shapiro is a rabbi, writer, and poet. This is a poem that he wrote called Unending Love. I am loved by an unending love. I am embraced by arms that find me, even when I am hidden from myself. I am touched by fingers that soothe me, even when I am too proud for soothing. I am counseled by voices that guide me, even when I am too embittered to hear. I am loved by an unending love. I am supported by hands that uplift me, even in the midst of a fall. I am urged on by eyes that meet me, even when I am too weak for meeting. 
I am loved by an unending love. Embraced, touched, soothed, and counseled, may mine too be the arms and the finger, fingers, the voice and the hands, the eyes and the smile that compels another, another to say, I am loved by an unending love. We are all loved by an unending love, a love that we receive from God no matter what. A love that seeks us out and finds us where we are and walks with us. We receive this gift of God's love and grace not because of anything that we did, but because of this unending love. As we hear today, we are then called to go out and share that gift. To take our woo-wee and share it with all that we meet. To not let our woo-wee grow quiet, but to let it be outspoken and loud for all to hear to share this gift and walk with one another so that we all are compelled to say, I am loved by an unending love. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need.
Lord of the Church. Ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O God. Lord of creation, we stand in awe at the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O God. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as inter international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O God. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. This day we pray especially for those on our prayer lists, including Bill, Gwen, Gloria, Mickey, Gail, Olin, Bruce, and Crystal. We also ask that you watch over and keep our armed forces and military members safe, especially Tyler, Tyler. Samantha, Samantha, Grant, Grant. Victor, Victor, Phil, Phil. George, George, Griffin, Griffin. Brian, Brian, and William. William. Hear us, O oh God. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O oh God. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints that rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Ever living, ever living God, author of creation, we give you thanks for your gift of water that brings life and refreshes the earth. We bless and praise you, for by water and the word we are cleansed from sin and receive everlasting life. Join us again this day to the saving death of Christ. Renew in us the living fountain of your grace and raise us with Christ Jesus to live in newness of life. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Almighty God, who gives us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, 
Forgive us all our sins, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. On the first day of the week at early dawn, the woman came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when, but they, when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember how he told you that while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified on the third day and rise again. Wash, O oh God, our sons and daughters, where your cleansing waters fall. Number them among your people, bless as Christ blessed long ago. Weave them garments bright and sparkling, compass them with love and light. Fill, anoint them, send your spirit, holy dove and heart's delight. Oh, how deep your holy wisdom unimagined all your ways. To your name be glory, honor, with our lives we worship praise. We, your people, stand before you, water washed and spirit born. By your grace, our lives we offer, recreate us, Lord, transform. Let us pray. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are, we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, of God's sovereign Savior and the Spirit be with you today and always.